ChatGPT is a wonderful tool for generating new content efficiently, but the sad reality is most people stop after getting their first output from ChatGPT. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the importance of follow-up prompting in ChatGPT, and I'm going to be giving you three of my favorite follow-up prompts that I like to use. Before we get into this video, if you want more than just these 5-10 to 10 minute ChatGPT tutorials, then consider purchasing my ChatGPT Mastery course where I take you from zero to hero in ChatGPT. You'll get access to a community flushed with helpful people, tips, and resources. You'll also obtain 25 plus private modules of ChatGPT that are always updating. And the fun doesn't stop there because you'll also receive a ChatGPT organization hub where you can organize your prompts and notes within folders. You can learn more about the ChatGPT mastery course by using the link in the description or the top pinned comment below. You can also watch the video that is in the upper right hand corner in order to learn a little bit more. Now let's jump back into follow up prompting in ChatGPT. Now when it comes to follow up prompting in ChatGPT, there are three categories I believe most follow up prompts will fall into. Analyzing, understanding, and expanding. The first follow up prompt in ChatGPT that we will be going over is an analyzing prompt. So this is going to help you analyze your solutions. Now there are many different types of analyzation follow-up prompts, but the one that's my favorite is listing the pros and cons. This works great for any problem that you have when you're trying to get ChatGPT to give you a solution or multiple solutions. So let me think of an arbitrary problem, and then we can use this follow-up prompt in order to help us better make a decision. Let's say I want to email my boss and ask them for a raise, and we don't get the opportunity to talk face-to-face, -face, so I need to email them asking them for a raise. Well, what I can ask ChatGPT to do is first, write me three variations of an email that I can send to my boss to ask him for a raise. So now we have our initial problem and we want ChatGPT to generate us three email variations that we could potentially send to our boss in order to get this raise. So first I'm going to send this off because in order to have a follow-up prompt, you need to have an initial prompt. And now we have all three of our emails in here, and let's say we can't make a decision on which one we want to send, or we want to dive a little bit deeper into the psychology of these prompts and which one would actually work best. Well, what we can do is we can throw in an analyzation follow-up prompt. There are multiple ways you can analyze outputs from ChatGPT. You can list pros and cons. You can get a probability of success score. There are multiple things you can do. You can pick one to use, or you can use multiple in conjunction with each other. So this is the follow-up prompt I gave ChatGPT in order to analyze my situation and all of these emails that it generated. List the pros and cons of each email, and then give me a probability of success on a scale of one to 10. So I can self-analyze this content, and then it's going to give its probability of success on a scale of one to 10. As you can see, it gives me email one, pros, cons, probability of success. Email two, pros, cons, probability of success. And then it does the same here with email three. And as you can see, after looking through all of these probabilities of success, the first email got a seven out of 10, the second email got a six out of 10, and the third email got a whopping eight out of 10. So this could sway our decision. In a situation like this, where you have multiple solutions to a problem and you don't know what solution to pick, First, I would list out the pros and cons of those in ChatGPT. So I would do one follow-up prompt where you list out the pros and cons of those solutions. I would then do a self-analyzation and give your own probability of success score on a scale of one to 10. So how do you think each one will perform? And after you have your scores, write them down somewhere else or in your computer, then I would go into asking ChatGPT to generate that probability of success and then you can compare and contrast your scores and the reasons you got to those scores. So using follow-up prompts for analyzations when it comes down to solutions for problems is very useful. A second way to use follow-up prompts in ChatGPT is for better understanding. Now this has been one of my favorite follow-up commands and I've mentioned it in many past videos, but the follow-up command is explain it like I'm five. You might be thinking, what the heck are you talking about? Explain it like I'm five? Well, let me hop into ChatGPT and dive a little bit more in depth to what this follow-up prompt actually entails. Let's say instead of going on Google and researching this for myself, I'm going to have ChatGPT be my study partner and I wanna learn what complexity theory is within business. I typed into ChatGPT, what is complexity theory in business? When I send it off, ChatGPT will give me a nice description about what complexity theory in business is. 
If you read through this article, it's very complex. There's a lot of large verbiage that is kind of hard for me to actually understand. So what I can actually do is tell ChatGPT to explain it like I'm five in order to get a summary that is easier to understand. And ChatGPT actually talks as if it were trying to explain it to a five-year-old. And not only does this help younger children understand difficult concepts, but it even helps grown adults understand complex topics much easier. So I've typed into ChatGPT my follow-up prompt of explain it like I am five. If you don't understand something, you can use this follow-up prompt in order to get a simplified variation of ChatGPT's initial response. And ChatGPT has a very, very unique way of describing this complexity theory. It says, let's think of business as a big, busy ant colony. In an ant colony, there's no boss ant telling every ant what to do. Instead, each ant has its own little job. So ants find food, others protect the colony, and some take care of the baby ants, even though each ant is doing its own thing, they all work together and the colony runs smoothly. So it starts to dive into relating complexity theory in business to an ant colony, and it keeps on using this ant colony analogy throughout this entire summary, making this super easy and very memorable. So you're always going to remember the complexity theory, and you can also easily understand the complexity theory, and not just the complexity theory either, but with any difficult topic to understand. Another way you can use follow-up prompts in ChatGPT is to expand your answers and expand your outputs. Now, the example that I'm about to show you seems straightforward, but it's very often overlooked within ChatGPT, and I use this one daily. Maybe I'm looking for YouTube channel names because I want to start a new YouTube channel. So what I can do is I can give ChatGPT my initial information and tell it to generate me some YouTube channel names. My initial prompt that I'm typing into ChatGPT is to generate me YouTube channel names for a YouTube channel in the making money online niche. And when I send that off, ChatGPT will do exactly that. It's going to start listing out YouTube channel names for me from a channel that is coming from the making money online niche. And what it did was it generated me 36 different channel names, but I looked through all these, I don't like any of them, and I also don't like how they're not spaced out in between them. This is where expanding on your answer can come into play with ChatGPT. A lot of people would just see this and they would say, okay, here are my 36 names I have to choose from, but what they don't know is that you can actually expand and go much further within the ChatGPT and also revise certain elements of your response as you go. This is the bulk of the follow-up prompt. Generate me number and then whatever you want more of. So whether that's more emails, solutions, channel names, business names, whatever it may be, that's what you wanna put there. But it doesn't have to stop at just that. If you don't like what you're seeing with the results above, then make sure to make that known within your follow-up prompt. Now I've given ChatGPT more instructions so that my next responses are much better. Make these more witty and put spaces between words. So we don't have to have all of these combined. It's a little hard to read and it looks a little different. So we are telling ChatGPT this and we are sending this off now. And as you can see, these names actually did turn out a lot better. There are spaces in between like I asked and they are more witty than the names above. So this has been three ways that you can use follow-up prompts in ChatGPT in order to have a better experience when using this chatbot. If you want to learn more about ChatGPT and you want to join a community flushed with ChatGPT innovators of the future, then use the link in the description or the top pinned comment in order to learn more about my ChatGPT mastery course and community. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment below letting me know what follow-up prompts you are currently using. I will see you in the next video.